What's up friends, in this video I'm doing a quick tutorial on how to tear down and assemble the Boardynamics all-terrain gear drive. Alright, so we're going to get started and we'll start by disassembling this side and then I'll take it all the way down and we'll reassemble it from there. So first thing you're going to need is something to take off the wheel and the size is 5 8 for the axle nut and then you're going to need a set of allen keys once you grab those you can go ahead and take off the axle nut now what we got to do is pull the wheel off and the screws on the back of the wheel slot into this metal star piece that you're going to see when I take it off. So it can be a little bit tricky. There we go. So and now you'll see the five screws that stick through. These are provided with the kit to make sure you have the right length. There is a spacer in between the bearings on this wheel. That's something that's really important to remember. And then there's a spacer that goes between the wheel and the actual gear inside. So next step is we have to take off this star piece and this attaches directly to the gear. So this is pretty easy. Go ahead and take that off. Now, there are four screws on the actual case and those four hold the case together against an o-ring that's on the edge of the drive gear so now we're going to take our three millimeter allen wrench and pop these off now with the four screws free, we can ease off the drive cover and it just comes loose. You might find some red grease on the inside. That's a good thing. Now you have your drive gear and your wheel gear. So the next thing is pulling off this drive wheel gear and this can be a little bit difficult. Gently use a pair of screwdrivers to slowly pop it off and just slide it the rest of the way and there you go. These screws are applied from Boardynamics already and they are permanently loctited in place, so they should never come loose. Now the next things you'll see here are the four screws that hold the motor on, and you'll use these four screws to adjust the backlash of the gear set, and I actually want to adjust it on this one, so I'll show you guys how to do that. But to actually get this off of the drive, what you're going to need to do is take off the three M4 by 8 screws that are on the back side of the mounting plate and you can kind of see them peeking through in these three positions but you just reach around take those off and the plate will come free from the adapter and then your adapter will slide off of your truck itself. You could actually slide the adapter off without unscrewing it but on my particular trucks it's a really tight fit and I had to work pretty hard to get it on there uh, with some filing and stuff like that. So don't necessarily recommend putting these on the oil slick trucks. Your mileage may vary how tight they are. I had four of them and it was only able to barely fit on one. So had to do quite a bit of filing to get this to work. So now that we've got the entire drive pretty much disassembled, let's build it back up. Your first step that you're going to want to do is take your motor mount plate and just slide it onto the truck 
Make sure that the groove on the plate is facing towards the outside as that's where the adapter for the hanger will attach to. The next step you're going to want to do is take your adapter for your hanger and slide it onto the hanger. And these are actually directional, so one side will only work on that side. It's not cross compatible. So you're going to slide your hanger adapter on, and then at that point, if you'd like, you can screw together your mount plate and your hanger adapter with the three and four by eight screws that go in a triangular pattern. And this will actually set the angle of your drive, so now would be a good time to check what angle you think you should put it at. This part that you're going to want to do is actually attach your motor, and the motor attaches with four M4 by eight screws. Again, it's the same exact screws that attach the plate to the adapter. And this is really important. You want to leave your motor screws a little bit loose right now because what you're going to need to do is actually adjust where the motor sits so that the gears properly mesh together. And it's a good idea to probably apply some blue Loctite to the screws when you attach them for the last time. going to apply some Loctite onto these motor screws and put them back in. So after you have your motor screws with your Loctite lightly screwed in, what you're going to want to do is take your drive gear and slide it on carefully, making sure it's straight right onto the adapter. And this can be a little difficult, so just take your time and make sure it goes on straight. Once you seat it all the way in, you're ready to move on to the next step. And the next step is actually adjusting the position of your motor's pinion gear. So at this point, you won't have your motor pinion gear attached, but for me, I already do. So basically what you're gonna wanna do is you seat your drive gear all the way down, you slide your motor pinion on, you put your key in, or you put your key in, then you slide your motor pinion on. And what you want to do is perfectly align the face of the drive pinion with the gear that drives the wheel. And the point of this is just to make sure that they always stay in perfect line. Now you apply your green Loctite on there and you spin it around to make sure it's nice and covered. And that will pretty much permanently fix your gear in place. So. Make sure it's lined up and all ready to go, and then wait for the green Loctite to cure. After your green Loctite is cured, what you're gonna wanna do is actually adjust the backlash of the gears. So I left my motor screws a little bit loose specifically to do this. So there's a few tutorials on actually getting the perfect backlash on the form. One suggestion is using a double folded sheet of paper and meshing it between the teeth but I'm just going to do it by sound and by looking at it because I know exactly how they're supposed to hit each other. So we're just gonna move the motor down into place and that's about what you wanna hear. Now that we've got our backlash set and I've tightened down two of the motor screws, we'll just pull the gear off again in order to tighten the other two down. Go ahead and slide back on your drive gear nice and smoothly and seat it all the way. Now that you've got your gear set, and you've got your drive gear put back on, we can move on to the next step, which is putting the case onto the actual drive. Now is a great time to apply some grease, and mine actually already has grease applied, it's just worked its way around. You don't need too much, but just enough to keep the gears working well. So apply your grease, and then you can put the casing on. It should fit 
pretty much all the way down and then there will be a tiny bit of a gap where it'll slide around. And that is actually the bearing sitting on the O-ring. So now we'll take our four M4 by 10 screws and go ahead and get those attached. And now is a good time to check that your motor spins freely. You should be able to spin it and it'll have a little bit of free roll. Now what you're going to do is take your star piece and slide it right on. And you can align it with the three holes. Now you're going to take your three countersunk screws and your M2.5 Allen key and you can slide them in there. And I'm going to apply a little bit of Loctite to these as well. It's probably not necessary, but can't really hurt. Now you've got your star piece mounted, it's time to make sure that the wheel is prepared properly. So if you have Rockstar 2 wheels, you will be provided a aluminum spacer that you might be able to see inside there. That spacer is not normally there on Rockstar 2 wheels, but in this design it's really important that we get a lot of pressure through the actual wheel nut because it helps hold the drive on. So. Install your spacer inside the wheel before you blow it up and attach the screws. Now, these screws are ones that are actually provided with a kit, so you're going to have to disassemble your Rockstar tubes anyway. So, when you're putting it back together, make sure you put that spacer in. And we also have another spacer. This small spacer goes right onto the axle and it goes in between the drive gear and the wheel itself. So now we're almost done and we can go ahead, align our wheel, align the five screws with the holes on the star piece, and then just go ahead and slowly press it right on there. And it should go in pretty easily. One problem that you might have is that your screws maybe a tiny bit too long depending on how much you tighten them down in the actual wheel so it might be a good idea to file off a tiny bit of the back side of each of those screws just to make sure they don't scrape the case most of the time you won't have a problem but if you notice earlier there were some marks on my casing and it might be a good idea for me to file down at least one of these that looks pretty long Finally, the last step is just putting the wheel axle nut on. And since we have that spacer in there, you can really get this one nice and tight. Now, you really just have to do this by feel, but once you get to the end, it really stops. And this is another great time to check if your drive spins freely. You should have a good bit of free roll and in fact it was enough to turn on my ESC so with that you're all done it's a pretty simple process but there's a few important things in there and hopefully this video was super useful to you and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I will do my best to answer them hopefully you have a great time with this drive and that's all for me peace out